AMD had the next Horizon event just a few days ago and even though it was all about cloud computing and server parts, there were a few interesting details for us PC gamers and enthusiasts. We got to see Zen 2 which gives us an indication of how fast next year's Ryzen chips will be and we saw 7nm Vega although there was still no word on whether that is ever coming to the consumer market as a gaming card. There was a slide in the next Horizon event that brought a bit of confusion as to how the 7nm parts will perform like. Previously AMD said that we would get a 35% improvement, but now they showed a 25% improvement for their 7nm products. However, if you look closely, you'll see that it actually says greater than 25%, which means that the earlier 35% increase was an estimate that AMD are now not confident they will be able to deliver, but not necessarily out of the question, depending on what product we are talking about. The other concerning detail was the specs that were revealed for the Vega 7nm card, the Radeon Instinct MI60. If we look at the footnotes of the testing conducted for the event, we can see that Vega 7nm has 14.7 teraflops of single precision, which means the MI60 is only 20% faster than the MI25 and only 15% faster than Vega 64 at single precision. Single precision, also referred to as FP32, is what matters to us gamers and also for deep learning applications. Now double precision is what scientific workloads require and here Vega 7 nanometer delivers 7.4 teraflops of performance, an increase of 864% over the Vega 64 based MI25. In other words, AMD wanted to bring to market an alternative to the Tesla V100, which has 7 teraflops of double precision performance and has been the card of choice for the scientific community. AMD's improvements for the MI60 are clearly geared towards that goal, so that might explain why the gains in single precision are only in the 20% mark. As far as the next Ryzen chips go, we learned that Zen 2 has an IPC improvement of 29.4% over the original Zen, which means it's about 26% faster in single core applications than Zen Plus. If you couple this with higher clock speeds, probably in the 4.7 GHz range, the 3700X should outperform the 9900K, even if the 9900K clocks higher. Which is kind of ironic because it's a similar situation to when AMD had the FX 9590 clocking in at 5GHz which stood no chance versus Intel's lower clocked i7s at the time. AMD has also redesigned the front end for Zen 2 as well as the efficiency of the whole package, which could mean that the Ryzen 3700X might scale better than the 2700X, so we could see chips overclockable to 4.9 GHz or who knows, maybe even higher. Also, although there was no indication of this, I think it would make sense for all of the next Ryzen 5s to be 6 core parts, with only the Ryzen 3s remaining as 4 core hyperthreaded chips. All this leads to the focus of this video, which I'm going to call the Voltron chip. The first Voltron chip would be the Ryzen 3400G, which could be a 6 core 12 threaded APU with a 3.7 GHz turbo and integrated Navi 11 graphics for around $170. That is insane value. If you have an older 4 core CPU and are looking to upgrade, you would be getting not only an upgrade to a 6 core, but also performance on par with the best that Intel has to offer thanks to that 29% IPC improvement. You would also get an upgrade path into Zen 2 Plus in 2020. You would spend less on a motherboard than you would if you went with the Z370 platform. And you would be getting a free GPU with the integrated Navi 11. And we will see in a second how fast integrated Navi would be. And when we look beyond 2019, we could see AMD in the coming years start to take over not just the low end, but also the mid-range discrete GPU with their APUs. In a recent interview with Anantech, Mark Papermaster had this to say, We've re-architected what we do to allow ourselves to be agile and putting our IPs together and eventually this will be an ecosystem based on our IPs. Companies that are agile and adaptable will win and this is the crux of AMD's strategy. 
we will be able to drive the base of the CPU and GPU roadmap that keeps us at the front of the leadership and have a modularity and flexibility to adapt to workloads as they merge. This means that AMD is in a unique position because they have solutions in both the CPU and GPU space and they are investing heavily in merging them. We saw an emphasis put on the new Infinity Fabric, which is a set of protocols to connect components. The new chiplet architecture of Epic 2 is also an indicator of what we will see in the consumer market in the coming months. When asked about how AMD plans to solve the latency issues that this approach creates, Mark Papermaster seemed to imply that they have a solution and will present it when Epic 2 launches. So at some point in the near future, possibly two years from now, AMD will have a true Voltron chip composed of small 7 nanometer chiplets for a unified CPU and GPU monolithic chip connected with Infinity Fabric and built in a way that is invisible to developers, particularly game developers. This would be equivalent to having a PC with multiple GPUs in Crossfire but without developers having to support Crossfire explicitly. As Jensen Huang would put it, it would just work. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's look at this 3400G, which will likely be coming next year. How fast will this APU be? In my previous estimates, I used AMD's claimed 35% improvement as a basis for predicting performance, and I think it's not unreasonable to expect that from Navi, but since AMD themselves are being a bit more conservative, we should probably stick to a combined 30% improvement going from the 2400G with Vega graphics to the 3400G with Navi graphics. Because not only do you get that 29% improvement in IPC, but there's also the increase in over 25% percent in graphics performance that comes from the node shrink to 7 nanometers. This would put the 3400G in between the level of performance of the budget-friendly cars like the GT 1030 and the mid-range entry-level GTX 1050. Remember, this is a GPU that you are getting for free when you upgrade to a 6-core CPU. Now, if you currently have something like a GTX 1070 or a high-end GPU, then this probably doesn't sound very exciting to you. But when you think that 90% of the gaming market has the performance level of a GTX 1060 or lower, and with the way the prices of GPUs are rising, these APUs start to make a lot of sense for a lot of people. At 7 nanometers, there's a lot more that you can cram into an APU. So even if AMD have to sacrifice L3 cache to get a more powerful GPU in there, I think an increase of 30% in performance is definitely within reason and maybe even a bit conservative. This would allow gamers to put together a capable 1080p gaming PC for less than $400, which can be very disruptive in the budget segment. And like we discussed before, there's a lot to be excited about about when it comes to high-end parts also, because the Epic 2 design that AMD showed at the next Horizon event will eventually come to the consumer market, both for CPUs and GPUs. And it's looking like the mainstream parts like the 3700X will take the lead in single-threaded applications away from Intel, so in the coming months you might be able to buy a CPU that performs on the same level as a 9900K or even beats it for about half of what that CPU costs. One area where there was no explicit information coming from the next Horizon event was regarding Navi. AMD have been very quiet about it, but we did get some leaks on the new Polaris card, the RX 590, which will presumably cost $330. So why would AMD be releasing a mid-range $330 card now if Navi is coming out in just a few months? Well, that's food for thought and I'll do a separate video on that, but despite what some rumors have suggested, I still think Navi will be a high-end card. More on that later. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons who, in addition to helping this channel exist and grow, also have access to my Discord server. Consider joining them for just $1 per month. If you can't contribute financially, please give this video a like and share it on social media as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.